We uh, have a CEO with us. Uh, I, I'm dying to hear uh, the number of employees he's got under him. I'll, I'll push his 800 SAT brain uh, a bit and say, uh, don't, don't tell me just uh, the direct reports you had under you and your leadership uh, field, but the indirect economic impact of all the subcontractors. Give us some sense of uh, what you were over. Uh, Christopher Miller, uh, Secretary of Defense under the previous administration, and uh, again, uh, just an, an incredible man. I met him at the Bible Museum. Uh, he's more extroverted than me. He's a friend to every single person he meets. He comes up and hugs you. He doesn't even know you, so I can tell he's a Christian. And uh, he, he's just the exact kind of guy uh, we love to have at Liberty University. He's a leader. Uh, he. He brings out the good in you. You want to do better when you're around him. And so, uh, Chris, why don't you give us a little bit about what it's like to uh, have probably the biggest uh, firm in the world, and uh, how, how in the world did you run that? Dave, I'm going to let you down. That was uh, so untrue and not necessary. <laughs> who, uh, who watched, who spoke after, uh, let's see, uh, Manning's Hall of Fame speech Sunday night? Does anybody remember who, who spoke after Peyton Manning's Hall of Fame speech? John Lynch. It was John Lynch, right? One person knows. I kind of feel the same way up here. Okay, Steve Green, Harry, and then these three, and now, now I'm John Lynch. You know, one person will remember. Um, so bear with me, if you will. Um, uh, Dave talked or brought up. Uh, let me start with, uh, then I heard the vo voice of the world. I, then I heard the voice of the Lord say, Who shall I send? Who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, Lord, send me. And Dave, you completely appreciate this, the call to serve. And then on the 20th, you, put, you went into the arena and elected office, which is a whole different level than what Tony and I experienced with uh, working uh, for President Trump. In national security and we left on the 20th and man I'll tell you what we went to the wilderness brother and you know meeting you man and swamp pastor Swansea like I don't know where that guy comes from like anytime I'm in need anytime like I'm feeling down he texts me like he's like channeling the Lord I, it's the oddest thing like talk about technology brother I mean what's going on with pastor Swansea we need to check into him uh, there's a thing. There's a thing in the military. I don't know uh, if you're aware of it. Uh, we have coins. They're presentation coins. And you only give them to people. Usually, I'm giving the civilians. No offense. Uh, so, so I had my personal coins made, and I thought that on the 20th we would hand them out. Now, here's a little. Anybody that wants to get into procurement and in DoD, I received them six months later. So, uh, so whoever made these didn't get paid for a long time. So be careful with the procurement of DOD. Um, but Dave, I want you to have this, man. So thanks for you know bringing us up, Tony and me, and a lot of other people you've seen uh, in the last day, and you'll see more to this afternoon. Bringing us out of the wilderness, man, and you really earned this one. So thank you. <laughs> Pastor Swansea's in a meeting right now, so. But thanks for your counsel. Thanks for your continuing your mission, missionary work. Uh, a Liberty. So the first person I ever worked with from Liberty graduated in 2020, Jordan Haley. For those of you, uh, she's going to host the next panel. Talk about magic. Talk about empathy. Talk about talent. Next level. For you young folks that are sitting in here, there. someone brought it up yesterday, but briefly. There is just so much inherent value in public service, and I, that's what I love about coming here, and thanks for you know, bringing us back, is the fact that you know, these people are talking about service, and not so much going to Wall Street and making a whole ton of money, which they obviously can do. And, and thank God there's still a place that in, inculcates those values. Um, so I urge you, to continue and listen and please go into public service because this country desperately needs you, people of faith, people of character, to go in and help right the wrongs. What I'm going to do briefly, 
That is crazy. So you have to watch that clock. I am completely intimidated right now. I had seven minutes. I got to go fast, dude. <laughs> right, I'm going to share. No, no, I won't do that to you, Dave. Uh, I know, well, Christy won't kill us. First off, we have the hook. Uh, I want to share with you the nature of the battlefield. I speak for one veteran. I speak for me. Others, many of you have also been on the battlefield. But the battlefield is an amazing place. On the battlefield, all of human emotion and all of human characteristics are compressed into, a, into this thing and place. And in battle, your battle might last a few minutes, it might last a couple hours, uh, a couple days when we're doing counterinsurgency, which is what we've done for the last 20 years, where you're living with your people and you're surrounded, oftentimes you're surrounded by the enemy. It's for your whole deployment, sometimes six, three months, six months, 12 months, eight months, uh, as long as 15 months. And in there you is fear, there's hatred, there's unbelievable dignity, there's heroism, there's selflessness that you couldn't believe, and there's selfishness that goes beyond all human understanding. And there comes a point on the battlefield where the killing has to stop. Romans talks around here, man. I'm not going to pull this one out of my memory because if I get this wrong, you know, it will. So I, you know, well, no, I don't want to mess it up. You know, Romans 12, 20, 21, 20 and 21. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, let me tell you, that briefs really well in here, and it briefs really well when you're in the classroom uh, at, your, at your training. But, man, when you're out there in the middle of it, you have to make the call. And you have to transition from waging war to transitioning to peace or to transition to not killing and not fighting. And, you know, it, at that point, it's not some postmodern, you know, discussion, master's discussion, sitting in the seminar room. You don't have anybody you can call because you gotta make the call right there. And on top of that, you know, whatever decision you make is going to Result, not everyone's going to be pleased with your decision. Uh, and you're all alone out there. And the only thing that matters at that point, it's not the technology. It comes down to character and courage. And that's what Maxwell talked about last night. Wasn't that amazing? And he talked about business ethics, right? And he says there's no such thing as business ethics. There's only ethics, right? And that is the most difficult decision you make. And you're an 18-year-old Lance Corporal or Corporal. Maybe you're 20, 22, you're a second lieutenant, you have 40 people. Maybe you're a general and you command thousands and thousands of people. But that decision is so profound and takes such character and such courage. Because at the end of the day, you feel it. You have to feel it. And You've got to stop the killing because our military, your military, we are a just force and we, the principles, and they don't really talk about this in your training and your education, but it's St. It's Augustine, it's just war theory, it really, really is. And you know, we do war to transition to peace, right? We, we know that we want peace, but the world still has evil in it and we still need to be prepared. So you have to make that decision, and the horrible thing on that decision is oftentimes uh, some of your people will be injured, will continue to be injured and killed, because as soon as you flip the off switch, the enemy doesn't know right away, so it takes a while. So the fighting continues for a while, and you're gonna lose people, and, and you're gonna have people that are horribly scarred and horribly upset with you, but that's why places like Liberty and, 
hey, so I was downstairs, and uh, you had a kid giving a tour last night. And he talked about that. They have a room upstairs for veterans. This kid's like 17, 18. He's not a veteran, clearly. But, you know, the fact that he brought that up with the families, you know, thanks, man. So you make the call, and everybody comes off the battlefield with injury. You can deal with physical injury, moral injury hurts. That's your, that's your thing. Chad was speaking to this afternoon. Bob Beast. The guns have fallen silent. The American guns have fallen silent. But the war continues and battles continue. You all are enormously gracious people. You have a bunch of philanthropic organizations. Continue to give. General Bob Beast and Chad Roby Show have something that is so powerful and important. Now, what you're doing with this network, so in the human intelligence business, you're always out spotting and assessing for talent and opportunity. So what I'm asking from you all is as you go back out to your communities and you meet with other people, like, please spot and assess. And I'm not, I have no role with either of their organizations, but I'm just in awe of what they're doing. Let's help them out, because we're not going to leave anybody behind this time. We always leave people behind. So it's not, it's not about the technology at the end of the day. It's about the humans. It's about people of character and courage and commitment that you all are raising here at Liberty that are so important about the future because we're going to have to keep fighting. It's just the way it is. But as long as we fight with courage, conviction, and as Christ warriors, this country is fine. Thanks, man. Wow.